This is the all new Mustang Dark Horse, and today I'm gonna to show you what it's like to drive it from a first person point of view. Under the hood of the Mustang Dark Horse is a five liter naturally aspirated V8, making 500 horsepower and 418 pound feet of torque. Zero to 60 happens in 4.1 seconds, the quarter mile in 12.5. There are two transmission options available. Standard is a six speed manual transmission. It's a Tremec unit that is absolutely fantastic, or optional is the 10 speed automatic transmission. The seventh gen Mustang is more of an evolution of the sixth gen design on the exterior than it is revolutionary, but I think it looks really nice. It's angular, it's mean. Because this has the handling package, we've got a bigger rear wing that looks absolutely awesome. Look how menacing that rear diffuser is with the quad exhaust. Not only does the Dark Horse have a power bump over the Mustang GT, we also have Magnaride dampers, stiffer springs, torsion, limited slip rear differential, as well as massive 15.5 inch Brembo's up front. Now, as part of a $5,000 handling package, this thing also gets Pirelli Trofeo RS tires like you'd get on a supercar or a hypercar. And they're absolutely enormous. Get this, 305s in the front and in the back, 315 millimeter tires. And they're basically racing slicks for the road. You'll also notice that we've got a bespoke dark horse badge. That reminds me kind of of Bojack Horseman. It's the only time a badge has been facing forward, the horse is facing at you, instead of to the side, like this. I honestly like the badging, and I think the dark horse looks absolutely epic from the outside. Hopping inside the Mustang dark horse now, we've got optional Recaro buckets that hold you in place very well. We've got a steering wheel that fits fantastic in your hands. Let's climb in. The transmission is fantastic. The throws are nice and short. It's properly notchy. The shift knob feels great in your hands. And we've also got a crazy electronic parking brake. Let's talk about this. Fire up the car. We've got a start stop button right there and then look at these massive displays. Can you believe this is a Mustang? We first saw a dual display like this in the S-Class in 2016, then we got it in BMWs, and now we've got it in a Mustang. If you go ahead and click this pony button right here, up pops my Mustang. Now, if we go into track apps, you'll notice drift brake. So if we activate that, it says track use only, this actually becomes a drift stick. So conventionally with emergency brakes to release it, you click a button, pull it up and then drop it. But actually to release this one, you just push it down and to activate, you pull it up. But because it's electronic, it works and basically modulates the amount the caliper is biting with the traction control to give you basically drift lessons and help you as a novice drifter. I think that is so awesome. Now, we've got a multitude of different drive modes to choose from, which we can select right here. So right now we are in track mode. We can do drag strip mode if we wanna race this on the track. We've got a custom mode, so you can customize all of the different characteristics. We also have normal mode and sport as well. But I mean, look how good these graphics are. In addition to the different driving modes, we can also change the cluster theme. So right now we're in track mode, which I think looks amazing. I mean, looks like it's straight out of a Ford GT. We can have it match the drive mode. So if we go to normal mode, it'll change into a different instrument cluster. Let's see what sport looks like. Radically different than the track mode. Normal mode, let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Radically different as well. But we can also come over here and see these two different modes. So calm mode gives you a very simplified instrument cluster, basically nothing at all. But the coolest one is this Fox body. It's actually got a retro instrument cluster from an 87 to 93 Fox body. I think that is so cool and more manufacturers should integrate that. Now there's more cool things on the screen as well. Let's go back to track apps. We can use launch control. You can customize the launch RPM setting. That would be crazy, launch at 7,000 RPM. We've also got an acceleration timer, brake performance, lap timer, et cetera, as well as a shift indicator. Launch control in the new Mustang. So if we click the pony button, we go into track apps, you'll see launch settings. We've got launch control activated. We've got drift setting, line lock. Let's go ahead, go into launch settings, 2,500 RPM launch. Let's boost that a little bit, enabled. Go ahead and put it into first gear, 2,800 RPM and off we go. Little wheel spin. This thing is fast and it sounds so damn good. Five liter naturally aspirated V8. 
zero to 60 in 4.1 seconds with a good launch, obviously. That one was not as ideal as it could have been. But where this car really shines is not its drag racing speed, it's its handling capabilities. With the handling package for five grand, we've got those Trofeo RS tires, 305 section in the front, 315s in the rear, and they provide so much grip. The amount of confidence you have in the turns in a Mustang is staggering. It's not anything different than Mustangs of recent time, but this is a friendly reminder that this is not a straight line car. This is a serious performance track machine. With the handling package, you also get stiffer springs. You get a bigger front splitter and rear spoiler. And all of those combined with those crazy Brembo brakes and a staggering amount of grip result in a brilliant handling sports car. Visibility is great. I wish there was more steering feel. That's my one complaint with the dark horse is you can't really feel anything in the steering itself. The grip levels are staggering and the performance is amazing, but you don't really get any feedback about what's going on with those front wheels. Oh, this thing is absolutely brilliant. The other thing that's really nice about this is that we've got different exhaust modes that are independent of the driving mode. So I'm in sport mode right now, but I can go over here and I can actually put the exhaust mode into quiet mode. So that way, if I'm exiting my neighborhood or I wanna rip around and not make as much noise and commotion, you can quiet down the exhaust. And one step cooler than that is that you can actually have a time frame that quiet mode activates. So let's say you go to work between seven and 8 a.m. Every day you can have it so the car automatically is in quiet mode between seven and 8 a.m. And then after that, it goes into track mode, which I think is absolutely awesome. Now, normal mode is loud and sport and track mode are also loud. Pretty much everything other than quiet mode is extraordinarily loud. But it's nice that you've got that little bit of quiet mode that you can activate. But this car is not about quiet modes. It's about the track performance. It is so well composed on the road. And despite being 3,900 pounds, you know, it feels like a bigger vehicle on the road, but it's also more nimble than you'd expect at the same time. It feels like it fills up the road, yet it can dart from side to side very easily. The only complaint I have about the tires is if the road gets uneven and there's little cuts and undulations in the road, the front tires can pull the car around a little bit, but that's true of pretty much every vehicle that has significant camber and massive front tires. This thing is just epic. The transmission is absolutely brilliant. The throws are nice and short. It feels like it almost has an aftermarket short throw shift kit. And, oh, and the power is just there at all times when you need it. I'm in love with this thing, honestly. It is such a good vehicle. Now, because it's got the Trofeo RSs, you do have to be careful and make sure they are warmed up all the way. Otherwise, it gets a little bit dicey. Pirellis, especially their Trofeo series tires, take a while to warm up. And I do wish it had something on the dash that showed you either tire temperature or if the tires were warm. Because otherwise, the first acceleration pull, you're kind of guessing, and it takes longer than you think it will to warm these things up. Overall, huge fan of the Mustang. The new look is brilliant, the interior is fantastic, and the handling is phenomenal. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I'll look forward to seeing you next video.